Hello and welcome to an awesome episode of the Drywall Podcast. I am your host, Nick Harmon. With us today, Ahmed Khalid of Triple T Taping out of Bimbook, Ontario. We talk about coming up first generation in the trade, living in Canada, his parents' immigration to Canada from Egypt, and we talk a lot about preventative physical maintenance with your body when you hit 40 but we also talk about his partner tanner and a lot about ice baths and how he started doing drywall on the weekends because maybe it paid a little more and I, yeah. my second day there i was asking the guy higher than me when do we get a raise he's like you just started and you already asked him for a raise and you're because- like fuck yeah i've been in college <laughs> for four years yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then you don't realize, like, I don't realize that I have to pay for toilet paper, for hydro. I'm 18, 19 years old at that time. Yeah. So when I realized that, I just went back with my brother-in-law. Then my brother started taping too, and we just went together and we learned to trade together pretty much. He also spent a lot of time in Alberta, Canada early on, and he also has a business degree, which helped him tremendously to become the successful business owner that he is. But of course, we also talk a lot about Fresco Harmony. This episode of the Drywall Podcast is brought to you by Columbia Tools, a family-owned and operated business that's been rocking the drywall finishing scene for over four decades. Manufactures commercial-grade tools in Canada using cutting-edge machinery and all North American materials. Catch my two-part interview with Aaron and Elliot of Columbia Tools, episodes 23 and 26, as well as my live interview with Bernie St. James, their dad and founder of Columbia Tools, on episode 54. You can also catch that entire episode on our Instagram page. If you haven't liked the Drywall Podcast Instagram page, please go and do so. Also, go and like the Columbia Tools page as well. Lots of cool stuff there. Guests of the Drywall Podcast will receive a sweet swag bucket from our friends over at CSR in Toronto filled with all kinds of cool stuff. Yes, just for being a guest. But for now, Ahmed Khalid on the 85th episode of the Drywall Podcast. Let's get into it. Uh, And you've got a bunch of followers on... Instagram. Did you buy those uh-huh. followers? You bought those guys. Did did you buy them all? No. <laughs> they all love those you. Were, those were earned. Uh, we've got Ahmed Khalid. Khalid. Is it Khalid yes. or Khalid? Khalid. It's Khalid. It's Khalid. Like Khalid. DJ Khalid. DJ Khalid. I don't know that. Is that a Canadian what? DJ? No. He's seriously. You don't know DJ Khalid? Come on, Nick. I'll look it up. Is it spelled? Is it spelled the same? Um, uh, it's spelled with an E D instead of an I D. Ah, uh, DJ Khaled. Are you into that? Are you into DJs? I'm into music. Me too. All kinds. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm pretty open. I'm pretty open, but uh, who are you listening to right now? And then I'll tell you who I'm listening to. So during the day, I'm mostly into alternative and rock. Okay, bring it. Keep coming. <laughs> and at night, I'm I, I, lately I've been liking a lot of house music and stuff. House music, and I've been listening yeah. to like a weird go to sleep music, like that you would listen to when you get a massage. Love it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's almost like, like just, elevator music. Yeah, it's like, but even softer. It's like, like waves that'll like just kind of come in and they'll get louder and then it'll like fade out. Does it work? Does it put you to sleep? Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, mostly right now, I'm into the Talking Heads for some reason. Like I'm like on this huge Talking Heads kick. Oh yeah. 
Yeah. I come from the era, the golden age of hip hop. I love my 90s hip hop. Okay. Okay. Yeah. For instance, like Run DMC. Sure. Biggie, yeah. Pac, yeah. Nas. Okay. Them, Busta Rhymes. Okay. Yeah. Snoop would Snoop fall into that category? Definitely. Actually, I I idolized them very much when I was young. <laughs> okay. And maybe you wanted to be a hip hop person when you were younger. Uh, sure. Sure. We all we all had a dream. But, so we all had a dream and then we ended up doing drywall. <laughs> yes. Somehow we ended up here. Yeah. So um what I guess we'll start there, man. So you're you're getting out of high school. Are you first generation drywaller? Definitely. I started actually dur- just right after high school. I uh, my parents went back home, and so I was just here with my brother and my sister. Where's back? Super- wait, where's back home? I'm Egyptian. Nice. Yeah. So are you, my parents are you a back- foot? Are you a soccer fan? Big soccer fan. I actually still play. So you know Sala? Of course. Who doesn't know Mo Sala? I got to see Sala play. We sell product in England. No way. Yep. I watched him. I watched him uh, three assists against Wolverhampton. Um, Well done. Yeah, they were done. They were down one zero at Wolverhampton. Oh, was it? Yeah. Awesome. Amazing experience. What an experience! I'd love to go to Europe and watch a a soccer game. Yeah, I'm. I still actually, play. I still play soccer too. I played college ball. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. When you come to Albuquerque to hang out and do some fresco harmony, we'll play. We'll, you can jump on my indoor team. I actually saw um, Brawley, um, Brawley's dad, do a video of the fresco harmony, and I actually have a question about that. Of course. What if you screw I- up? That's a good, that's a good question. And the, the simple answer is, yeah, you could skim over that, that sample that he made. Were you watching the live video? Yeah. Yeah. I so, watched part two, I believe, or part one. Yeah. That sample that he made, you can go over that as many times as you like, you know, I mean, it's the glue and the mud that makes it so, uh, easy to work with, you know? So like, say I didn't like the way it looked, I would just go over it again. Exactly. Yeah, I want to do uh, renovate my main floor and my part of my feature wall. It's I want it to be fresco. There you go. And I mean, you can get now CSR. I sent them some extra products so you can get like a sample pack and try it out and make a sample board or do a, some in your garage. And then we have like a color chart and then you can pick a color or you can go right into CSR. They've got all the colors there. You can like pick a color. And just do a wall. If you don't like it, redo it. You know? Yeah. Is CSR the only place that um, sells them? In Canada right now. Yeah, so they're quite a ways from me. Yeah, but you can order online pretty easily from yeah. those guys. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, I ship it all over the United States. Yeah, we ordered something from them the other day. It came in like two days, so it's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, uh, you would just request a sample pack. I think that I talked to Vince, they're doing like sample pack requests now. So you could request a sample pack and then just try it out. You know, I'm, I, and I was talking to those guys. I was like, that's a good way to market it for me here in the United States. Just send it out and people can try it if they're interested. So what would I do for with the sample? Would I do what Brawley did with that piece of cardboard and just do it on there or a piece of drywall? Well, the sample is more for you to get familiar with the product, mix it up, which you wouldn't have any problem with because you're a drywaller. You dump in the color, you mix it up, um, and you just sort of familiarize yourself with each of those steps. There's three steps. Base coat is heavy. Second coat is tight. And then the third coat is a sealer done right you i see you've got some horton's coffee there always <laughs> well, i love that canada just boycotts fucking starbucks <laughs> we don't actually our starbucks is becoming big here and lineups and it's almost becoming like a, a cultural thing here starbucks bastards and they're kicking out horton's man yeah oh, it's, gonna got... be, it's gonna be hard for them to kick out horton's from here 
<laughs> we live close to Hamilton. That's the first Tim Hortons ever was in Hamilton. Oh, well, there's a fun yeah. fact about uh, Hamilton. And you live in first Hamilton. Tim uh, yeah, it's considered Hamilton, but it's just outside. Okay. All right. It's called cool. Pembroke. And, yeah. Interesting. And uh, the big French influence up there in Ontario. Not big at all. Not big at Not all. Not where I am. No, like, of course, if you go towards Montreal or Quebec or something, for sure. But here, honestly, not much at all. Okay. Another cool aspect of the Drywall Podcast is we're taking the ignorance, you know, of Americans that, like, know nothing. Like, I've been up to Canada a couple of times now, and this is the joke. Like, we don't know shit about Canada. We can't even it's name true. the provinces. <laughs> And so I like to dive in a little bit about like Canada, like the provinces, where the provinces are located, and then all these various areas around. I've had tons of interviews from, uh, you know, the GTA and like that whole area, just for whatever reason, uh, you know, you guys keep popping up on my my radar. And then there's a lot of heavy Canada influence on uh, in drywall on social media, you know, Phil right. and like, you know, drywall nation and all that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you know what? Like I, whenever I go down South and I meet Americans, that's when I realize that you guys know nothing about us. We don't even know you uh, exist. Like, is there, is there, is there a country? Is there a country that lives above us? <laughs> Believe me, there is. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're up here we're cold but we're up here and we flourish yeah. we flourish and we're all very kind too we're kind people <laughs> very <laughs> yeah i love love the canadians um so yeah but i mean i'm from washington state so i was you know we would go up and play soccer in my youth in uh bc vancouver bc would have a tournament and so uh i've been up to canada from a young age but um, I'm just getting familiar with like Toronto. I'd love to get up into Alberta and those in that area. We're a lot like the the states. Like, yeah. if you were blindfolded and you were taken somewhere in Canada, you some you probably wouldn't even know that you're in Canada yet. No, no. Just aside from, you, like, I couldn't believe the co the the weather. Like, cause we went up to Barry. We went up to the CSR location in Barry, and it was just snowing. Like, yeah, it's even colder there. Yeah. It's more, it's more up North than here. Yeah. So it's yeah. definitely colder. Yeah. yeah. Um, like, but yeah. I go to Buffalo, like I've been to Buffalo Bills games and stuff. And honestly, it looks the same as here. Right. Right. These invisible lines that humans create. It's ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, what podcast do you listen to when you, and, and triple T, I'm assuming there's two other T's involved here. No. No, has it's not because your I... name's Am Am Ahmed. 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 <laughs> it's almond without the N. It's an almond without the N. Amend. Amen. Like Ahmed. Uh... Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, Amen. Actually... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. With a so D. Most, most of my podcasts that i listen to are mma podcasts um i'm really into the ufc my friends and i <clears throat> okay used to listen to the jre back in the day and What's then that? it just got weird uh, the joe rogan podcast or the joe oh, rogan okay. experience yeah 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 but that that got a little stale so it's mostly mma podcasts i listen to okay and because joe rogan's but a now, big M mma guy yeah, he's actually he's the one of the commentators in the UFC. And he, did he found, like found? Did he start UFC? No, he was just he used to be a like an interviewer post fights, and then he became a commentator, and then he blew up through podcasting where he just does events and whenever they're in the United States. Okay. Very cool. Like we we saw him. I went to uh, I went to Vegas for International Fight Week uh, last July. Okay. For the fights, and we saw him there. So that was pretty cool. Nice, nice. Um, yeah. all right. Are we gonna? We got to start getting into the drywall stuff here. 
let's get in. Are you first generation? Did we establish that? Yeah. Yeah, what do you mean by first generation? Like I'm the first? Yes. Yeah. Did your dad uh, do it? Family? Did your dad no. teach you how? A lot of drywallers, no. um, their dads, their grandfathers, whatever they taught him how to do it. No, I used to do it as a part time job when I went to college for business, and then uh, my parents went back home, so okay. I had I had to make a move, so I started doing it full time, and here we are. Interesting. Yeah. So your parents moved. Also, another difference between Canada and the United States, you were like, if you go to Canada, you wouldn't notice any difference. I mean, aside from like New York or something, a lot of diversity in Canada because you want the people coming. You're more inviting, I would say, for people, uh, immigrants, or people coming from other countries. You want that to bolster your economy. Correct. Yeah. 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 Is that why your parents, is that why your parents came to Canada? My parents came to Canada. Yes. Because, you know, uh, Egypt is, it's, it's a dictatorship, right? Yeah. And they just, and then a lot of the youth don't have work there. So my parents, I have five siblings. Right. So they kind of like, you know, jumped the gun and made sure that they, decided to bring us here and we came here so we can have work and opportunity okay but my mom has her ba from london england she's a professor back home and when she okay. came here it didn't mean anything okay right so she had to like she was working at like say a tim hortons for an example or a salvation yeah. army so and then where she, she came to a point where she gave us a choice do you guys want to come home with me or stay here i was 17 of course, I'm going to say stay here. Bye bye, parents, you know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes so, sense. How how old were you? 12. Okay. So you're older. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Oh, yeah. I was 12 and then they left when we were, se I was 17. That's still scary, dude. That's only five years. Dude, you know what's scary? The scary part was um, when... She actually left, and yeah. it's you start realizing you got to pay for this, you got to pay for that. It's not yeah. as easy as you would think it is when your parents are here. Yeah, welcome to the big leagues, rookie. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then when I had my first daughter, I realized what a mistake my parents did by leaving us. I wouldn't even leave her in a different town at 17, never mind a different country. Yeah. How how old's your daughter? My daughter now is 10. My 10. older one. I have two, 10 and 8. Okay. So this was a while ago. How old are you, if you don't mind my asking? Right now I'm 41, 42 in a couple of weeks. And you're still playing soccer. That's pretty good. And you know what? I found out last season... I was by far the oldest on the team and it hit me pretty hard, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome. Uh, if you're playing, pretty hard. I'm 47 and I'm still going and, and I'm ripping with those guys still, but preventative maintenance, dude, you got to get into foam rolling. Uh, I do ice baths. Nutrition's a big I deal. Know. You got to start doing that like stuff. You got to start doing that stuff. I have I an I, I have an ice bath. I do it uh, every other day, like whatever. You I've know. been thinking about the ice bath, but I'm just such a coward when it comes to that. They're really hard. They're not for everybody. But that, but foam roller for sure. Like if you get with a trainer and do a little bit of foam rolling, this is for all drywallers out there. I mean, you get older, you get stiff, but you can do like a lacrosse ball on different parts of your back or shoulder when your shoulders get, and uh, you know, the sciatica back here, the, these certain muscles, these specific muscles, like my knee was like starting to give out and I was like, gonna like stop. And um, I got with a nutritionist who happened to be very good at, physical therapy and he was like oh you just need to like do x y and z and i fought it and fought it and i started doing that damn foam roller dude and no injuries like none. my guy tanner 
the guy that works for me, Tanner, he tells me every time I'm like, oh, my back or all oh, my shoulder. He's like, yeah. oh, do you want my foam roller? Do you want my foam roller? Yeah. And he's yeah. young and he's already on that. Yeah. It took me several years of my friend Grant and this guy like getting after me. And like I finally, yeah. like I had sessions with him where we would work out and a lot of it was stretching mobility and foam roller. Like he wouldn't even let me lift weights. I've heard a lot of, of goods about ice bats too. I got to do that. I got to man up and do that. Yeah. I'm just yeah. so bad when it comes to cold. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. But you would, uh, Joe Rogan's interview with Wim Hof is fantastic. And he also does a good one with Russell Brand. Where uh, About what? About the ice bath? Yeah, he was like the originator of the ice bath, like this Wim Hof fella, W-I-M-H-O-F. Yeah, or H-O-F-F, Wim Hof, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, we I just interviewed Transcend Taping. Uh, you familiar with Sasha? Yeah, for, for sure. So maybe two, three episodes ago, um, uh, her husband does ice baths so we talked about it a little bit and now we're messaging on instagram about ice baths cool guy <laughs> so what if i want to try it do i just do my bathtub like i have a corner tub at home one of those do i just try it in that first good question uh they uh wim hof suggests and this is what i did and i would suggest to you is at the end of your shower like if you want to start doing cold exposure, slowly turn it to cold. Like you're uh, in your shower, you get hot, you wash off, do all your stuff. And then it's hard to do. Like, I'm not going to lie, but you slowly uh, turn it over to cold and you, you know, and it forces that breath. It forces that intensity. And you do start out with 30 seconds of cold exposure in the shower before you get out of the shower. So when do you do the ice bath after a game or in the beginning of the day? Ideally you'd want to do it after a workout, but, uh, earlier in the day, like after this podcast, I would go and do the ice bath. And then a lot of people do it first thing. Cause it like just invigorates you. Yeah. Um, I would do it. I wait for it to warm up or I'll do it all the way up into early afternoon before lunch, like I would do it and then eat something warm because you're warming up. Your, your body is burning calories to warm up and you're like, it forces the breath, but you're like, uh, that warm up phase is really key. So there's certain temperatures that you have your, your bath at, you get all the way down to freezing. I think it's like five degrees Celsius for you guys. It's 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh-huh. So, but I'll go in warmer than that, like 40 degrees is Joe Rogan. Like you've heard different people suggest different temperatures, 37 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit is a good range. And it doesn't freeze my feet so much, but I'll go in for about four minutes or five minutes. That was, that was my next question. Yeah. So do you average about four or five minutes? Fuck, that's mm -hmm. a while, man. Yeah. So I have like, like, let's say I have talking heads on the podcast on a Pandora. So I'll pick a song that's five minutes, do all my stuff. I do push ups, sit ups, and then uh, like warm up a little bit because I'm outside. My bath is outside. So I'm in my shorts and then uh, get my, my heart rate up a little bit and then hit the song, and then that's my key to just go in. You just don't think about it after that. Just get in there, go through the pain, and then your body like goes through this change. It's really weird, like the shift. And after, it after about a minute, and a minute goes by really quick, after a minute you can settle in and you get your breathing under control. So what have you found most benefited you from the ice bath? It sounds weird, but mental health, it'll shift your day like that. It, sh it, it And the, there's a dopamine release attached to it too. So I'm clean from drugs and alcohol. So I really 
feel that shift when after, you know, on a day that I do an ice bath, I feel the shift sleep. It's really good for sleep. There's a lot of benefits that you can look into. Like if you listen to that interview with Wim Hof, it's, he just talks about the the benefit. I'm not like a, uh, there's teachers. I'm not yeah, like, I got it. you know, I, I got it. I just wanted your take on your experience. Mm -hmm. That's all. I did the first one and then I, it just called to me. Like I did one and I was like, my buddy had a freezer. This was like three years ago before it was a thing. And like, I was like, that's stupid, dude. You're never going to use that. You're going to do one. <laughs> and he was like trying to get into his bathtub. And he's like, I and I was like, oh, you got to get in and stay in, dude. You You can't like get in and get out. And for some reason, I just knew that. Maybe it's from being from the Northwest or whatever, like, you know, jumping in cold water. But uh, he invited me over and I had to show him up. So like he had ice on the top, like, and it was like 32 degrees, like it was freezing. And uh, I got in for five minutes, you know, and showed him up. And uh, <laughs> and then he got in after that. He still does ice baths too, by the way. We both do. Um, and after that, I was like, okay, well, I proved that I can do it. Like, I'll never do that again. Like that was, you know, crazy. And, uh, about a week later, I was like, I want to do it again. So it called to me like, yeah. Uh huh. So I guess I just got to break the ice then. eh? Maybe it's, it's not least. for everybody. We have friends that have done it and they're like, you guys are idiots. It's not, I and hate yeah, it. They're, they're, I don't want to yeah. do it. Yeah, I'll give it a try. I've been wanting to. I've just been a coward about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there's places that have ice baths that you can go to. There's also cryotherapy, which is a chamber that you stand in and they crank it down and you go in for a period of time. Some gyms have a cryo, but it's not as hard as the water. We haven't talked at all about drywall. Let's Crazy. talk. <laughs> um. So your mom, your parents, are they still together? No. No. Okay. So your mom, you're with your mom. You're in, uh, you're in Ontario. Well, my, parents, my parents were here. Then they split up. Then they both went separate ways home. Okay. So your dad, you're, they're split up, but your dad left too. Yeah. Do they come back to visit periodically? Yes and no. I haven't seen my dad in a long time. Okay. But my mom, my mom will come every few years or so. She's getting older now. It's tough for her, and she just retired. Like she went back home, and they automatic. She went back to her old job. She used to be a professor at a college. Yeah. And then they right away they offered her a job at uh, Abu Dhabi University in UAE. Okay. So she went there and finished her career off there. And now she's back in Egypt. Very cool. Um. This was a while ago now. Uh, you look pretty yeah. young, but you're 41, so you're getting up there. <laughs> I am. Trust me. There's, no, I found out, I was the... There's no denying yeah, it. Once you hit 40, it's good. like, all right. Whatever. Father time is undefeated. <laughs> yeah, and you have two kids. I'm, I am I girls. get the sense. Two girls. Okay, so a 10-year-old and? An 8-year-old. An eight-year-old, different mom, same mom. Oh, no, same mom. Same mom, and you're married. Yes. Good. I've been with my wife since high school. Awesome! Wow. Yeah. That's really cool. How long have you been married? Uh, oh nine, so whatever that is, fifteen okay. years. That's a bit. That's a little bit. Good for you. That's cool. Um. Thanks, mom. So. 17 though mom and dad leave and how did you stumble under the trade so my my brother-in-law did taping he was taping for a company or for another guy and then i just during college i'd go there on weekends and i'd help him part-time and then uh, my parents left and I finished college and it what there was no money, not enough money to starting, you know, as an apprentice anywhere. I yeah. got my uh, business admin. And when I started, I was at like nine twenty-five an hour. 
And I, yeah. my second day there, I was asking the guy higher than me, when do we get a raise? He's like, you just started and you already asked him for a raise. And you're because, like, fuck yeah. I've been in college for four years. Yeah. <laughs> and then you don't realize, like, I don't realize that I have to pay for toilet paper, for hydro. I'm 18, 19 years old at that time. Yeah. So when I realized that, I just went back with my brother-in-law then my brother started taping too, and we just went together and we learned to trade together pretty much. Nice. And then here we are. I actually, I used to live in Calgary, Alberta. Okay. It was booming back in 06, 07, 08. All right. I went up there for two months. I ended up staying for three years. Nice. And there's decent money in drywall. It seems like in, in Canada, not so much down here. Uh, no. probably not up there too in certain areas, but it seems like in your area, it's pretty good. Like you guys do pretty well up there. I, I can't compare it to anything. So I'm just going to nod my head. Okay. And, but I'm, the, I'm not sure. And then that business admin, that, that business education that you had out of college. So you have your bachelor's degree. Yeah. Business diploma, a business administration diploma. That's a fantastic foundation, though, for running your own drywall business, right? For sure. For yeah. sure. It helped yeah. me a lot. But uh, I wish I, sometimes I wish I pursued it more. I was just, my hands were tied back then, you know? Yeah, you got to make money. I get it. And believe me, I was making, comparing to everyone around me, I was making money. Yeah. You know, and then everybody caught up. Everybody what? Caught up. Caught up. Everybody got. <laughs> I got friends that are doctors, lawyers. You know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Realtors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, they eventually caught up. Yeah, but they have to be doctors, dude. You get to go and play in the mud every day. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it is what it is. I mean, I was it talking. Is. I was talking with Teak about this. Um, that we don't really talk about on the drywall podcast a whole lot. I mean, I've got 80 some episodes. That's, you know, we talk about how the mud is special. Like we have an attraction to the mud, just like the cold exposure. There's an attraction there that I had when I was in the union, when I started and the old, the journeymen were like, get out. You don't want to do go save yourself. <laughs> like and They were all like, miserable. They're all miserable bastards. And it, it's like, okay, I see that too. It's hard work of the, of the trades. Like I don't, I, I like it better than roofing or masonry. Like I sure don't want to fucking work outside in the cold stacking rocks that like, that looks hard. Um, you know, finishing seems like a trade. Maybe it's not like electrical, like those princesses prancing around, like doing electrical, leaving their garbage everywhere. It's not like that but it's like physical and it's kind of cool uh, and you get to work with mud and it's certainly skilled, um, but it does get old. There's that aspect of it where it's like day in, day out, you know, the grind. You, once you learn how to finish, you kind of like, you know how to do it. This is what I found with taping. When I first started, I fell in love with it because A, it was it's almost like just because it's just like it's satisfying on Instagram. It's satisfying in real life yeah. to run a box and you see yourself, you ran this whole room in a few yeah. minutes because of a yeah. box, this and that. And then I started realizing that it's not a trade for everyone. And there's yeah. lots of people that can be jack of all trades except this one. Yes. Like they can get by in a lot of <laughs> trades except this one. And I know a lot of guys that are all around players when it comes to construction until it comes to taping. Yes. <laughs> so that's even what the guys, I loved about Even it. the guys that think like they're contractors or like GCs or whatever, they think they can do finishing. And it's like, give me a break, dude. I've seen your stuff. You $50,000 remodel and then you send these yahoos in. Like, cause you guys do everything and it looks like fucking shit. And you put yeah. your stamp on this $50,000 remodel and it looks like sh the, the thing that people look at the most, your walls look like ass when you're done. Like, congratulations. And just to prove themselves right, they'll pass it, you know? 
Oh, yeah, yeah. And down here they do textures, so it can look extra shitty. But you'll still see the, like, you'll still see the butts and bands, like, through the texture. Texture don't cover a fucking shitty butt joint. No Even way. Even here, when they do spray ceiling, a lot of the 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 you know the cookie cutter homes like production homes they yeah. they only do one coat they only do one coat on screws in the box on the yeah. tape and then they cover it and you can see it yeah you can see it like that light shines across there it's like you see every seam and butt even sometimes yeah the 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 streaks like you see them for yeah. the for the screws yeah yeah <laughs> so that's what got me falling in love with the trade then to be honest, there was a part where I was over it. Like I was done. I was like, I got to do something else, but it was hard to move to something else because it's hard to take a pay cut. But to be honest, since I hired Tanner, which is the guy that's with me. <laughs> so since I hired him and we opened the Insta account, I'll be honest, it revamped my love for the trade. Okay, cool. And just following other people and seeing the tight knit community, you know, of the same few hundred people that interact on the same posts and stuff, you know. Yeah. So yeah. That's what. That's what I revamped the trade for me again. Like I almost love it again. You're touching on something that I want to get into, but keep going. Yeah. So that's pretty much it. That's what brought me back out of the hole that I was in, where it was. I was telling myself I need to do something else. Fucking Tanner was part of that. Have you told him? Have you told him? He he can tell. He knows. I don't know if I've told him. I might have actually. Go tell but Tanner. Now I will go, go back and tell. Go him. tell Tanner today. Be like, hey, you know what, bro? Like, thank you. Done. <laughs> so to the name, you. It, it's funny how we got to our name. Okay. So when Tanner first started with me, he was he was super young. He was fresh, like first time ever on a job site. Okay. And when he started, when whenever we drive back home from work and stuff, I'm like, you know what, man? I I I have an Instagram account and I follow all these drywall tapers. It'd be cool if we had our own. And so he was almost like wondering why I'm telling him this. And I was like, because you're young, you should be like this should come ne second nature to you. Open up an yeah. account, make reels, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So we didn't open one because we couldn't figure out a name. Then okay. one day he one day he goes, I opened an account, uh, an Insta page. I'm like, oh, did you? What'd you call it? He goes, the Toke Tapers. Oh, boy. He called, he called it the Toke Tapers, right? Like had it T-U-K or? Yeah, like, the, you know, how he wears a toque all the time. Oh, Toke. Okay. All right. So he called it a Toke Taper. I'm like, that makes no sense because I don't wear a toque. You wear one all the time, but I don't <laughs> wear one. The one so Toke what Taper. <laughs> <laughs> so what did I do? The Toke Tapers is three T's. Okay. Right? And Love it. Triple, triple T Taping is also three T's. Triple T Taping. Ooh, nice. So I was like, and it has a nice ring to it. So that's how yeah. I have Triple T. I, I read it for the longest time. I read it as triplet. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> I know because when Insta puts it together, I know. Yeah. Triplet tape, triplet, triplet aping. <laughs> um, very cool. So that thing that you're touching on and uh, is is sort of what has happened with the Drywall Podcast and meeting these dudes. Um, like once I get done interviewing you, we'll know each other. Like. Yeah, that, that's sure. it. And it's like, so I would have these conversations about Fresco Harmony all the time. And I was like, oh, I can pick off these drywallers one at a time and like get to know them. And uh, the byproduct is community. Like, so with like the, um, the adventures, like these drywall, you know, we have one coming up now, this drywall adventure in BC, Surrey. Uh, Teak's going to be there, the Gilbert Girls. Uh, oh, yeah. Danny Moody and Sean and Cam and Chad and me and we're you know the uh, Trim Tex is sponsoring it. Uh, advanced, um, we're getting free product from USG. Like so, it's starting to gain in momentum. But the coolest part about it isn't that, uh, or that you can go somewhere and make money and have kind of a vacation, and hang out with drywallers. It's the camaraderie. 
Like, like you're talking about with Tanner, this, uh, connection. Um, and I was talking about with Jack, like my guy, Jack's burnout. I set up jobs. He does them, but he's like burnout and I get it. Like he works alone a lot. It's way more yeah. fun to work with somebody and showcase your skills. So it depends I, who the somebody is though. Totally. Totally. I I've get that. that a lot too. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we went out to Illinois. We did a big fresco job in Illinois with Chad. We're doing Galtier steel on a commercial project. And it was just, we just had a ball and we're working four hour days, like, and just fucking off. But like when you have four guys and you work four hour day, you get a shitload done. You're not humping like you are when you're by yourself or with one other dude. Like it's, you can achieve so much more work with four five, six guys or girls, you know, especially if it's a fun atmosphere too, where you don't feel like you're working, that goes a long way too. Yeah. Or you're learning new things. Now all of a sudden we're going to be in Surrey. The Gilbert girls are going to bring their flair. Teak's going to bring her Hawk and trial skills. And we're going to be learning from each other and, you know, giving each other shit and razzing each other and all that good stuff, you know, and it's like breathing life back into the trade, you know, because we've always been separate in this trade. Yeah. It's interesting. Definitely. I definitely have a revamp of, of taping and, and just in mentally it's, it's gone up there where I'm out of that rut where I want out, where you yeah, get to share good. your skills with others, learn from others, use new tools and stuff. Yeah. It's definitely different. Yeah. And back to the, you always need someone like to work with someone. It makes it easier. That's true because when you complain, you don't want to complain to yourself. You want to complain to someone that's working with you so they can agree or disagree with you. You know, it yeah. just makes the day go by faster and you're not in your head too much. Yeah. You know, our yeah. job is, is more hands-on than thinking. So it leaves room to think about other stuff. Yes. Yeah. So it's better to have others there where you could just release some of those thoughts, you know? And even with something cool like colored mud or you're making these beautiful walls, it doesn't matter if you kind of don't have yeah. that, if you don't have somebody to share it with. It's weird. It gets it gets repetitive and it just becomes an everyday thing where it's almost like you have to do it, not want to do it. Correct. Correct. Um, so that's an interesting aspect. I want to get back to these 11,000 fucking followers. What's that all about, dude? What'd you guys take your Bro, shirts off? Did you take your shirts off? We started about a year ago. And I remember uh, there's another guy that I follow. He's he, I, I grew up with him. Is Top Shelf. It's called Top Shelf. He's a cleaning okay. company. Okay. And he called me one day and he goes, hey, uh, you asked me for my Instagram account. How come? I was like, oh, I have a work one now too. So he goes on it, calls me back five minutes later. He's like, you realize that one of your reels hit a, a million? I'm like, what does that even mean? Right. So I go on Instagram. He goes, see that tab in the middle? Hit it. I didn't even know you could look at views. And I already hit a million of one. I was doing a butt joint at real okay. time speed. Okay. And, uh, I was like, holy, he's like, brother, sorry to break it to you. It's so rare that you might not get that again. Okay. So I almost made it my mission to get it again. Oh, all right. And we hit it twice more. What do you think differentiated that video from other videos? I'll tell you. Our job, we're lucky as drywall finishers that our job is Instagram friendly. And what I mean by Instagram friendly is... It's so satisfying to the eye of people that know nothing ah, about the trade. Love it's it. so satisfying. I have friends that have had an Instagram account for six years and don't even have 5,000 followers. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm doing colored mud though, but I think that the content is really key too though. But also I'm not running like the box. Like, so exactly. <laughs> and even like when drywallers will do a time lapse of a room where it's all studs and then they do a time lapse video and it's getting covered, it's satisfying yeah. to the eye to see it get sealed up. Definitely. So we're just lucky. It's our trade. It's not it's not our videos really. It's not our creative input. 
it is yeah. but it's that that's only to an extent it's most of all our job is satisfying to look at people like to see mud get splattered and then get wiped clean and tight nice so you leverage that interest in those videos how did you do that what do you mean how did you leverage so okay so you got a million views was it just automatic that people started to like your page after uh you have a video get a million views yeah i noticed as when say mm. i like a, someone's instagram story or whatever yeah that that story or that reel will come on my followers feeds okay Okay. So like say I like Nick Harmony's last post. Yeah. It will go on my followers page when they're scrolling through. Okay. And it will say in the bottom it will say triple T taping like this and others. Okay. Do you know what right. I mean? So yeah. it's almost like an algorithm thing. For me I noticed yeah. most of my views come from me doing butt joints, not even corner beats. Yeah, the girls talk about that's why you see so many of the screws spotting okay so you get all these views uh and you start to get an uptick in your instagram account are you an influencer in that maybe columbia or uh can am or some of these companies start to reach out to you we recently we've had about three companies that have reached out to us okay and i mean how do you handle that I say yes. So they, they want to want to send me tools. They want to send you some tools. For me to, yeah, for me to review and make content on, and tools that I want from them to make reels and review for them. You're like fuck yeah, send no. me some send me some tools, man. To be honest, the only reason why I started this account, Tanner and I, was for fun, which yeah. definitely definitely worked because I, I liked the job again. Okay. And two um free tools sure being sure. honest sure but i mean it's I to, to be you know you got to be respectful it's hard to it's hard not everybody gets a video with a million views so there's something special like you know like cam like it's you man cam you watch his videos like you know who i'm talking about right <laughs> he's one of my favorite he's one of my yeah favorite. yeah he just has that fucking vibe like right away you're just like i love this guy <laughs> like, he's just <laughs> such a likable person for some reason and you yeah. know what he's super 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 talented Yes. Yeah. Well, there's a lot and, of riffraff out there, but yeah. he is super talented. He's not scared of anything. You know, he'll do anything. Uh, I've noticed. And it's like, I didn't even know he like ran the bazooka, but he all of a sudden he's like flying with the bazooka. It's like, that's so cool. Like he just picks it up and he's good. He's yeah. good at it, you know? Yeah. And his videos are good too. They're, you know, he's good, just got a cool vibe. So, yeah. That's interesting, um, he's for sure. Chill and he's very talented. Like not just the bazooka and stuff. Like he does things where it's a dying trade here. I know that. I don't know what it is like over there where you guys are from. But like when he does like the spray and he does those circles and on stilts, he does. You know, when yeah. he does the texture stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's talent, dude. You don't mm -hmm. see guys like that anymore. Yeah, yeah. He right away. So I interviewed him a long time ago. Like, oh, I think a year ago, over a year ago now, that's how I got to Aaron with uh, Columbia. Um, he's just as friendly and cool in person, you know. Also, there's this, like, hesitancy, you know, to do an interview or I don't know this Nick character. I don't know, you know, I don't know Ahmed. I, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, I'll stay in my lane. He's a drywaller. We have this sort of this guard up, but once we get to know each other, then it's all good because we both do. We both understand the trade, so we we have that we have that connection already. I'll be honest with you, it, like <laughs> it doesn't feel like I've followed you and watched your stuff so much of you guys in Ohio or wherever you were, and when you talk or when you walk through a job site and okay. you talk, it almost felt like. This is not the first time we met. Does that sound weird? 
No, no. I think that too, I maybe have a larger, cause I only have like 1800, I think on my fresco page. And then I've got like 1200 on the, but I feel like I'm out there a lot more and people are watching a lot more than I think. <laughs> so it would be more different for your perspective than mine because I've heard you talk online. I've heard you walk around with the camera and talk with your own voice and say this or say that. I don't talk in any of my reels. Right, right. So it's different, right? Yeah, that's a Like tough... I've already heard your voice. This is your first time hearing my voice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it feel, for me, it doesn't you. feel like we just started talking. And for me, it doesn't feel like we just met right now. I think there's value in that, though. Like, Sean's good at it, too. Like, I appreciate the people that go on and do live. It's hard to do, um, but there's a value in it because you it really personalizes the person, you know. Like, I've never met Brawley, and I feel like I know him in some sense. Every you day. Know? Right. Every day we listen, we want good morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and he's got a podcast too, of course. Have you been on his podcast? No. So his, it's pretty interesting as well. He just interviewed uh, Brad Hanna. It's, it's interesting. Do you know who Brad Hanna is? Okay. Um, he kind of like, uh, he ruffled some feathers. He was kind of like the bad boy of, uh, it, you know, early on he wow. was, an, he was an influencer. And then, uh, I think he got into some kind of a, tr some kind of trouble, but, uh, you know, he's just kind of like, uh, he could be a troublemaker, I guess, you know, really nice guy though. We did a live interview at the, at the Barry opening when I went up there last year. And, uh, it's funny. It's really funny. If the Barry opening was now, I think Tanner and I would come. But last year we were too fresh, you know? Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. feel like we would we would go to anything that, like if CSR had something, I feel like we would go. Yeah, we're going to do another training because I did a training uh, was that weekend. So I did a training on that Friday at the Barry opening for Fresco Harmony at the CSR <clears throat> in Toronto. And then we drove up. So is Fresco Harmony like almost like Venetian? No, it's, you know, I mean, and Venetian too is just a buzzword. There's all these different types. There's like diamond finish and marmarino and portillo and American clay. And there's all these weird systems that are laborious and cost and, and like expensive. Whereas... Fresco Harmony is just efficient and affordable. And and almost, and by the sounds of it, a, a lot of people can do it themselves. Well, I'm using all purpose joint compound. Like, throw a lid on it, you know, come back after lunch and finish a wall. Yeah. <laughs> No, you're right. I like that a lot. No, like, it's a lot of these, a lot of these products go off. So you either have to use it really quickly or you waste money. Um, there's a lot to it. Once I started going down the rabbit hole, it just was like, oh my God, you know, it, it, it was amazing. Um, and it's still unfolding. It's still unfolding all the time. It's a really cool story. So how would you know how much to put in a pail of mud? It's measured. So it's one unit per one box of mud. So what if I'm doing a an area where it doesn't need that much mud. I would just take a little bit and then mix a little bit in it. Yeah. But like, like, let's say I'm doing this wall behind me. It's probably 10 by 15 feet. I'm going to okay. burn a bucket of mud on that fucking wall, especially covering yeah. the texture. Yeah. The base coat's oh, going to eat okay. the base coat's going to eat a bunch. And then I have to do a second coat. So I'm going to use three quarters of a bucket of mud, two and a half gallons on that wall a 10 by 15 wall. So you get about a 150 square feet, something like that. And then I got to seal it. So the sealer goes, you know, 600 square feet, but the material cost is down around 25 cents a square foot. Very cheap, cheaper than paint. Well, the first coat has to be thick. And you said the second coat has to be tight. So tight as in like put on, take off. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's but text. When it's you... textural. Okay, so when you leave the first one thick and it's like different layers, and then you go and skim, it's just gonna smooth out everything. Yeah, but your peaks and valleys from that base coat from that base coat <laughs> create create your design, your movement, so to speak, your modeling. I did, that didn't occur to me early on. I thought that like to get two colors, like because the cool thing about plaster is like you get multicolor, you get like dimensionality of uh, yeah. out of the wall. That's what's attractive. That's what people like. You get it with the sealer too. So when you run a when you run a seam, you fill it. Your first coat is you fill the seam. But your second coat is tight. Now, let's say you d you forget to sand off your lap line. You get a flash joint right there. You get that little. Uh, that's so your you'll see that after. You create that purposeful flashing all over your wall with the base coat. And it covers up the ugly ass texture on that first coat. So it does right. two things. Second coat brings the wall back to kind of flat, but not perfectly flat. And it brings out all that color from your high and low points. Right. And then when you seal it, the sealer compresses like wet sanding. The sealer and Brawley went through yet last night. He was going light. He went through each step. So he puts so on the bait. To part two. Part two, he was doing the second coat. So he was running the tight. Yeah, that's what I need to see. So I could see if when he does it smooth, does it smooth it all out. But the sealer is really what smooths it because it's a high viscosity trowel sealer. It's like a uh, yogurt. It's thick. Yeah. You know, you put it on, you trowel it on. So when yeah. you, when I go to trowel on that sealer, it compresses those layers of mud and smooths it out. And then it impregnates the mud is, which is thirsty for moisture. It impregnates it with the sealer. And it makes it just like smooth as a baby's butt. I love it. It's crazy. And the sealer's the same for all colors, right? Yeah, sealer's just clear. We have colored sealer, but it's like just you have gloss and satin, but they both have a very matte feel to them. Oh, yeah. Like when you're when you're done, it's very earthen. And people right. are like, Well, can you do the shiny plaster? And it's like, No, I do this is what it looks yeah. like. This is I'd it. I'd rather have it matte. And that's real popular now. So then Not you can nice. you can dump in a little silica sand and you can get like a traditional plaster look that way. Or a right. micro micro cement with mud. You can get with that mud. look with just mud. Yeah. That's you don't amazing. need to you don't need to go and then you have to prep the surface. Yeah. But Fresco Harmony, you can go right over level two, level three finish. No sand. Like because it's so thick first layer, right? You're doing two fat coats of mud <laughs> the whole wall. You just bury everything. Yeah. So it doesn't we were when we were in Colorado, um, we were doing this texture with a pool trowel, with a 14 inch pool trowel. So we wouldn't even we would glaze the angles, but we wouldn't even like second coat them. We just leave them, and because you're pulling a full coat right. of mud o over the entire wall, and then you'd leave these subtle lightning bolt kind of texture. It's a great texture because your finish doesn't have to be as clean, and then it's easy to patch. Yeah. But it it looks smooth, kind of. You know, it doesn't look like an ugly, bumpy texture. So that was interesting to me and it was like oh oh you know if you put color in the mud and did that texture well you'd paint and texture at the same time that seems smart and then it started evolving from there i love it that's crazy it's not a big deal it's uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah it's all it's in our my <laughs> neck of the woods you know like it's my kind of forte you would love it because it's mud yeah if drywall guys were a little bit more open, what I've ran into is like, we're closed. We tend to be closed minded or they think it's Venetian plaster or something. And it's like, no, it's fucking color joint compound. You're just skimming walls. There's it a learning a lot curve. too that those guys, that those guys are showing us online. Totally. Like I, know way more. I would have never known about it if it wasn't I know. for you guys. 
Like I've got 70 videos on fucking YouTube. You think one of those has got a million views? It's like, no way. Cam throws a reel up on TikTok and it's like, boom, you know? <laughs> like you know people people don't want to watch this guy like you know it's it's like it's an unfair (laughs) thing man honestly yeah it is i and i try to make you know my last fresco video was pretty cool i use beck you know for the music um you know i i did some creative things but i just don't have the vibe i just don't have the vibe (laughs) which is fine i don't care um but the more, yeah, those guys jumping on board has has given other people permission. It's like, oh, it's okay. You know, the, I could probably try that out or do it. So it's been cool. Yeah. I like, I want to do it now just from online, from you, uh, to man Cam, Brawley. So uh, influentially, are you, you were using tools before uh, uh, you maybe climbed to 11,000 followers what what was your tool of choice before becoming an influencer and have any of those new tools that you've been sent uh, inspired you in any way? Well, we haven't really been sent much yet. Okay. It's on the move. It's on the move. Like we're supposed to get stuff this month and next month. Okay. But uh, honestly, Trowel and Hawk is king, man. Okay, you're a hand finisher guy. We we use all boxes and stuff. We just don't use a bazooka. We use a super okay. taper. Okay. You're the second you know one I mean? in a row. You're the second uh, slot box guy. <laughs> well, it's not a slot box, but okay. It is a, sl- it is a shit box. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but it's not the hopper one. It's not the hopper. It's you the... Know- the- you know, the su- super, taper? Super, super taper sounds better than shit box. I'll give you that. <laughs> but it, it goes from the super taper and ends up in the shit box. So <laughs> it's always gonna end up in the shit box before it That's goes on the right. wall. <laughs> That's right. They should call it the shit taper. <laughs> but I've had I've had Columbia boxes since 07, 06, 07. Okay. You're a Columbia fan. Uh, that's what we started with. Very uh, honestly, they're old boxes. I love that. I still have them, and that's okay. how I got to know Aaron and stuff. I DM'd him once looking for a brass piece. Okay, and that's how we got to know each other. And he sent me some extra stuff here and there, and that's how we have our hoodies. We have hoodies that say Triple T and Columbia and stuff. Oh, cool, cool. But uh, I think all in all, Trowel and Hawk is king. Okay. Like the like the big dog. He so, uses hawk, a hawk and trowel. No, yeah, he like that. Uh, it li- yeah, like they they exactly. Columbia made big dog a a, a yeah. shirt, which is smart. This is good marketing. Definitely. Um, and you're a hawk and trowel guy uh, yeah. when you're wiping behind or running your corner bead or whatever. Butt joints, corner beads, all our like we use angle box for angles. We use boxes for flats. But when it comes to finish, I finish with a hawk and trowel. Very cool. Very cool. I'm so glad uh, that we got a chance to talk. Um, it's, you know, as soon as you said you're a soccer player, it's like, well, fuck, we're done. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, we don't get much soccer players on here, you know. Uh, very good interview. And uh, we'll talk offline. So there's a link I think that Vince is making. So if you have any questions, there's kind of like a sales as a business person, you'll understand like a sales funnel because people don't know uh, what's going on with Fresco. They're, you know, they the first right. step is like curiosity. And then it's like, well, fucking get some and make a sample. Like try it out. That's the next step. I'll- I definitely will do that. Um, but there's, and then after that, there's even like, okay, now do a wall, pick a color, do a wall, now sell it. Like, you know, now go fucking make money with it. You know, now you've got drywall over here you're making money with, but it's like, hey, builder, check this out. You want a free accent wall? Pick a color. There's a color chart, pick a color. It looks like this and I'll just do it for you for free. And if you like it, and then 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 you start like, because we've done whole houses in this shit. You I know? saw that. 
That's crazy. Eh? That That's wasn't even lot. me. That company sucked. They had never. Like, Wait, what? <laughs> they're not going to watch this, but like, I went it to the Fresco stuff. It was Fresco, but the oh. company wasn't a drywall company. They were a cement company. They were like a jack of all trades company. And like, I went to the homeowner and he had known me for a while from, I had done a plaster patch for him, like traditional plaster. I patched it and like made some money. And he was like, Hey, I got, I'm building this monstrosity house. Can you come give me a bid on like some accent walls? And I get to the house. I'm like, why don't you have this drywall guys just like blow this shit out? And <laughs> it was like, okay. You know, and I was like, and we, there's a company here, Elite Drywall, that does fresco, and they've done several houses. They're good at it. And I was like, you should get a bid from Elite because they know how to do it. They're like, good. And they're a drywall company instead of these yahoos. And he was like, no, I'll see if these guys can do it. And I was like, well, let me just caution you. Like, you know, there might be a learning curve for this crew. And he let them take off, dude. The, the drywall was so atrocious, Ahmed. Like you wouldn't believe how ugly and they, they fucking did it. They did the whole house in fresco. So yeah. it wasn't even taped. No, it was taped and coded, but it was all done by hand. And it was like, you know how, when you see a newbie do like a band and it looks all blotchy on the edge, yeah. all of it, all of it looked like that. Wow. And I was like, well, this is going to be a good system for you guys because the fresco is at least going to cover all of that shitty. Like, even if you wanted to paint it afterwards, like, you're lucky you're doing fresco because this finish work is atrocious. And I mean, I think they worked for the homeowner. It was one of those deals where he was, you know, these guys are cheap, man, you know? <clears throat> so did it cover most? Covered everything. Buried everything? it. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, he painted is... the garage. He painted the garages, but they did fresco and everything else, and it fucking didn't look bad, man. These guys wrestled through it, and it looked, you know, I go in and they try to do like patches, or they go up a whole wall, and like you could see the seam, and I'm like, dude, you got to reskim that wall. Like that looks like shit, you know. But it's not a big deal. Like let's say I'm doing a wall in a certain color, like to just reskim the wall and reseal it, yeah. you know. Like, so, yeah. but it was their first job and they did the whole thing. Crazy. And they got away with it. That's crazy. Ceilings too? So far, but I had to do, uh, like I had to do ceilings, everything. They did the ceilings in Gallery Pearl and they did the walls in Merriman Beige. And I'm, that's the house I'm doing the walkthrough through, <laughs> Those, you know, two Mexican dudes. And like, oh yeah. Yeah. That's that with the theater. Like it's that, that project. Those guys, they're the worst finishers. Like you, like I didn't say that on the live video and I, yeah, I ho no. hopefully they're not watching or listening to this podcast, but like, you know, they have no business finishing. Like, like we talked yeah. about at the beginning, like they were like that, like, oh, we're a concrete company. We can do X, Y, and Z. We've done yeah. stucco. We're going to come in and finish your house. And it's like, no, you guys suck. <laughs> <laughs> But for some reason, like fresco, you can get away with kind of being messy. You don't like it's yeah. almost like the messier it is, the the more movement you get, you know, when you do it kind of right. shittily. You, it almost looks I, better. I thought you had to go all one way, but I saw Brawley yesterday. He was going everywhere. Yeah, because then you're making different textural lines. It's abstract. I call it organized abstraction. You're moving across the wall left to right, but you're you know, kind of go in different directions with the trowel. Yeah. Yeah. I was a I pan and try it. I was a pan and knife guy until I moved to Colorado <clears throat> and we started doing that texture. And that's how I learned the hawk and trowel. I've never used a square edge trowel. I've always used a pool trowel. And it's always for texture. So you're that much cooler now, eh? I mean there's some things like I can use a pan and knife. Like if I'm running corner beat, I use a pan and knife. Yeah. You know, so that's weird. Um, but it's cool knowing how to use both. Um, because sure. they're, bo they're both completely different skill sets. For sure. I am nowhere close with a knife <clears throat> and pan. Yeah. Yeah. As they're I different. With a hawk and trowel. Yeah. 
Uh, I think that if I went back to drywall finishing, I would be predominantly a Hawk and trial guy just because of the way it loads up and the way you can load up a butt. It's, I feel like it's more efficient, but that's, yeah, that's always, a, it's always going to be opinion to the person. Yeah, for sure. I'm mad. Khalid. <laughs> So you have to keep saying the name so it sticks in there, man. Uh, so good to have you on the Drywall Podcast today. A young 41 years old, Triple T taping. Look out, like a year in, dude, you guys are crushing it. You're getting free product. Uh, appreciate um, that. I really enjoyed this conversation. I don't, on all the episodes, I don't get into Fresco Harmony so much. I don't want to do too much shameless advertising, you know, but like, if it comes up and if somebody's genuinely curious about it, like I'll talk about it. It's, it's interesting. I think, um, as is ice baths, um, and, uh, drywall finishing, which we discussed. And I appreciate you, uh, coming on the podcast today, man. Appreciate you for having me and thinking about us. Yeah. We'll get in touch offline and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and, uh, say hi to Tanner. Will do, my man. Thank you very much. Later. Take care. Special thanks to Ahmed Khalid for being with us on the Drywall Podcast today. Triple T taping. How cool is that? Also, I want to give a huge shout out to Columbia Tools for sponsoring the months of January and February on the Drywall Podcast. I sincerely appreciate them. They've supported Fresco Harmony and the Drywall Podcast since the start. Super cool company, super cool dudes. They don't just walk the walk or talk the talk. At Columbia, customer service is their battle cry. This is true. Their top priority is giving you a great A experience from start to finish. Got a question or a concern? They're ready to tackle those concerns head on by email, phone, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Wherever you need to find them, they will be there. And also be sure to check out their YouTube channel as their how-to videos are the secret sauce. And those kick-ass videos will keep your tools in prime condition curious about where to hear the drywall podcast we are available on your favorite platforms such as podbean apple podcast spotify youtube uh you can watch the whole episode on our youtube page which is pretty cool thank you so much for joining the drywall podcast today i sincerely appreciate it join us next week c and b drywall cow bakeberg out of kokatu Minnesota. But until then, I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. And remember, keep drywalling.